place I'd rather be than in God's house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel a wonderful presence of God in here, in this house. Praise God. Go ahead and get you some. Don't leave without getting your miracle. Don't leave without getting your filling. Don't leave without getting the, the presence of God in your life, in your heart, and in your spirit. Oh, is there anybody hungry for God in this place? Because if you're hungry, you'll seek Him. And if you'll seek Him, you shall find Him in this Woo! I love to be with a people that loves God thank you Lord Jesus praise the Lord praise the Lord sometimes this is the best part of church we just come here in one of mine in one court in agreement with each other saying I'm here to worship the Lord I'm here to praise the Lord Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just take some time to feel his presence. We're not in any hurry. Dom. We're doing what I came here to do. Feel him loving you right now. See, when you call on God, he begins to pay attention. The angels in heaven begin to say, wait a minute. There's a group of people who want my attention, who want God's attention. And they'll begin to take notice of the church when we begin to call on him. Woo! Anybody have a need in this place? Anybody have a need? This is the kind of atmosphere that you want to put out a need for God. This is the kind of atmosphere that you want to put out your love to God so that he can return it right back. Some of you may have made mistakes this week. Some of you may have blown it with God this week. But today, you're in the presence of the Most High God. And he is a God of second chances. He's a forgiving God. He's merciful. And if you'll repent, turn to him, grab on to the Lord, and don't let go. In the wonderful name of Jesus, I love you, Jesus. You are the best God. You're the most high God. You are above every other God. You're the only one true living God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. feeling in my spirit that we just need to take a few seconds to thank God we don't thank him enough church I'm, I'm me included we don't thank him enough we just need to just whatever you have today in your life be grateful for it whatever God has done so far to this day be grateful for it be so grateful that you're thinking to yourself God if you never did another thing in my life I would just be grateful from today until the day you come because you've given me so much you've done so much in my life I cannot complain oh I thank you Lord and the wonderful miracle is is that God's got more for you <laughs> My God is a God of more. All he wants to do is give you more if you would simply follow him. Praise God. If you just follow him, what he would do and what he would give. Praise God. One last thing, if we begin to just put out to the heavens what we need from God. Please do me a favor. Don't waste God's time asking him for things that are not in his will. Ask him for what you need that's in his will, and he will give it to you. See, if you, oh, come on, God just spoke. If you ask and it's not his will, you don't get it. That's not his fault. But if you ask in his will, let him show you who he is and let him bless you. In Jesus' name, God. 
we need some musicians. We need leaders. We need those that are ready to be trained. We need. I've just bought a whole bunch of training books on ministry and youth ministry and, and, and preachers. And we need to develop leaders and preachers in this church. Lord God, we need the people in this church, anybody who's struggling today, we need you to bless them. See, God will answer that kind of prayer. If there's anybody struggling, God, you know who they are. People don't always have the courage to say, yes, it's me, I'm struggling. Well, God knows who you are. Pray for the church right now. If anybody is struggling, my God, bless them. Praise God, we have needs today. Let there, let there be a church here that's developing a foundation that's strong and powerful so that when the storm comes, we won't be shaken to and fro by every wind of doctrine. But be stable in the Lord, strong and powerful, therefore being an example in the name of Jesus. Praise God, praise God whatever needs. There's a lot of unspoken requests that I'm feeling right now. There's an unspoken request out there. Let that person pray on to God and let that unspoken request be heard. Let it be in the will of God that God can prove himself. What does he say? Prove me that I would pour out a miracle, pour out a blessing that you could not contain. Try me, God says. Try me. Woo. Praise God. Praise God. That's it. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I feel like somebody's got the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody has taken a hold of the Spirit of God. Mm, just let the Spirit reign in this place. Let the Holy Spirit reign. Rain down. Right now, rain down. Let it bless the flesh in this place. Because we need the Spirit to get the flesh to do spiritual things. That's from God. We need the Spirit to have the flesh do spiritual things. Because without the Spirit, the flesh does what the flesh wants to do. Oh, does anybody need the Spirit right now? Does anybody need the Holy Ghost to transform your flesh to an activity of God or an action of God that you might be blessed? Oh, let the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Ghost flow in this place. My God, my God. We love your presence. We feel your presence. We're here to receive something from you. Oh, let the Holy Ghost come right now and bless this wonderful people. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, that's it, young girl. Yes, it. Just seek out God. You have liberty in this place. Uh, any age, doesn't matter, young or old, we should all come before the throne of grace uh, and seek his face. Seek him right now. <laughs> you Jesus I love what I feel in these wonderful people seeking your face oh we come with you in all sincerity we come before you in humility God oh just loving you today blessed by you. We're here to feel your presence. Go ahead and close your eyes. Go ahead and just let God begin to move on you and talk to you. Oh, let him bless you. Let him make himself known to you. Praise God. Praise God. My Jesus. We know you are real. We know that you are true. Oh, we're here to worship and bless your holy name. Yes, Lord.
praise God. Freedom and liberty is what you obtain in the house of God. My God, we're here to love you. We're here to praise you. We're here to worship you. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. That's right. Open up to the Lord. Open up to the Lord. Oh, let no one in this place quench the Spirit of God. Oh, I don't want to hold back the Spirit of God, but I want to let God loose in this place. I want to open up in this place. I want to give God his all in this place. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. characters try to do it by themselves and so many failed but with you God all things are possible with you God all things oh with you God all things are possible in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name Somebody's loving him right now. Someone's getting an answer right now. Someone's getting their blessing right now. Someone's getting touched by God right now because of their submission and obedience to his presence in this house. Woo! Yes. Yes. <laughs> that are crying are doing so in complete adoration to the Lord. Doing so because they feel his presence. Not necessarily because they're sad. Oh, but because they're so glad that they know the king. They're so glad that they're a child of the king. They're so glad that they know him personally and that they are intimate with God. And the love is so strong that it brings tears to the eyes of those that are feeling his love right now. <laughs> I'm so glad to be yours. I'm so glad to be yours. I've seen what it's like not to be yours, God. And it's not pretty. It's an ugly sight not to be owned by God. Oh, hallelujah. You can only have one master. If you're not owned by God, you're owned by somebody else. Oh, and it's not God. Hallelujah. It's not good. You can only have one master. So choose right now who you're going to serve. Is it going to be God? Is it going to be man? Are you going to serve the devil? Are you going to serve Satan? Are you going to serve sin in your life? They're all the same. Or are you going to serve God? In this place, Jesus. Hallelujah. I know who I serve today. I know who I choose. 
I don't want to be lukewarm today. I don't want to be spewed out of the mouth of the Lord, but I want to be held in by God. So I'm not going to be lukewarm, and I'm not going to be cold. I'm going to stay hot in the Lord. Jesus, Jesus. the Lord. What you're experiencing right now is see some people go to church but when you come to New Hope we don't go to church we have church. There's a difference between going to church and having church. Right now you are having church because God is all over it. God is in it around it and all about this place. Now you are having church. Woo! Praise God. Go ahead and clap. Go ahead and clap onto the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I love having church. I don't like just going to church. If I'm not going to get nothing out of it, then why even go? I go to have church. Praise God. Could I have some people willing to worship? The worship team come. Sister Carol, Sister Rochelle, I need your help if you would. Sister Tiffany, if you would come. Praise God. Hallelujah. That scare you? Keep your attention, young man. Keep your attention. There's two mics over there. I want to thank you for coming to New Hope Pentecostal Church. I see we have a bunch of visitors. I want to welcome you all. I see most of you are friends with Sister Paula and Sister Anna. Uh, Sister Arviso, I'm so glad that you came. That whole section over there, right there. All of you guys, welcome. <laughs> Praise God. It's so good to have you here. Praise the Lord. You have come to a place where there is hope for the hopeless. And I know that you may say, do you have your card? I know you may say, I already have hope. Well, that's good, but you got to maintain that hope. Because every day of your life, you're going to be attacked by this thing called an enemy. It's an ugly foe. So even if you have hope already, you still need to continue to maintain your hope. I want to thank uh, Arnold Benali and Rolinda James. Uh, they were here for uh, Brother uh, Melvin. Brother Melvin, I want to say Kircher, but I'm, going to, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Vandiver, praise God. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't say that during their wedding. Praise the Lord, they were here, and we're so good to have you. It's good to see you again, praise God. Thank you for coming. We just love having you here. Praise God. God will send them. We just got to open the door. That's all we got to do. We're going to be here week in and week out, but right now we're going to take some time to sing. We take uh, a great deal of effort to put the songs up on the screen, and so as a result of that, I would ask that you actually sing with us. They're there. You don't have to be an opera singer. You don't have to sing as good as Sister James. <laughs> you don't know who that's the new one over there. Remember what she's saying? Oh. The, yeah, that's her. Well, you'll get to know her. Here it is. <laughs> I'm hoping we'll see her again a couple times. Praise the Lord. I've heard that they were. You guys moved to town yet? Not yet? I'll be I'll be. Jesus, make it quick. Come on now. Praise the Lord. We're just so good to have all these wonderful people here. Let us sing unto the Lord. Please join in as we sing.
Susie, and I'm going to do some more prayers in a minute, but I'm going to have to go over these drums. Uh, Sister Susie's grandmother was in the hospital yesterday. A lot of people going to the hospital. Sister Nadine went to the hospital this, last night or this morning. Uh, we're going to lift them up in prayer, but I'm going to go over here. Uh, I, I would like to get God's attention. Amen. And you know, sometimes, sometimes it's, it's that small, still voice. And sometimes we just have that worship hush. But I know there is a God that loves to hear a shout, yes. a cry out, yes. a roar of the Lion yes. of Judah. And I wonder if there's anybody in here who can show me, show me that we have a cry out on the God. Hallelujah. Woo. Praise God. Well, I want to know my shouters as we sing about the fact there's only one way to Jesus. <laughs> my God.
There's only one way to my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, if you're not going to shout during the song, then you're going to shout right now. Okay, come on now, somebody. Woo, come on. There's only one way to my God, and that way is Jesus. Praise God, praise God. Ooh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ooh, he's good. Does anybody believe God is good today? God is good. God is good all the time. There's never a time where my God is not good. Hallelujah, praise God. You may be seated if you can. Praise the Lord. You can stand for the whole service. That'd be all right. Wouldn't bother me one bit. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you. I need to exercise. <laughs> I need to exercise so I can run in church more, so I can jump in church. If I'm too tired to jump in church, I need to get some exercise. I thought you lost some weight. I gained it all back. <laughs> <laughs> Losing is the easy part. It's keeping it off is the other part. Uh, but, but I'm working on that. I, can't, I just get to that point where I can't tie my shoes without holding my breath and say, that's enough. It's time to get back into the eating properly and <laughs> doing all that good stuff. Praise the Lord. But I want to be able to worship my God. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Lord, I believe the Lord just spoke to me. Some of y'all need to get in shape because when the Holy Ghost starts pouring out on this day when, when there's some real evidences, I mean even more than now, that God's coming, we're going to be jumping and we're going to be like, <sighs> and people are going to be dancing, shouting all around you. Y'all need to get in shape. <laughs> the Lord just told me to tell you, you better get in shape because you better get ready to dance and shout and get busy for God and get, and get excited and jump. Woo! Y'all better be ready for Jesus' jazzercise because it's coming. There's a day coming and you're not going to be able to worship anymore. You'll be laying on the floor tired. People will be dancing all around you. Praise God. Welcome again to New Hope Pentecostal Church. We're so excited that you came. We're so excited about all these new visitors that are here. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, if everybody came on the same day, we wouldn't have room for them. That's right. Amen. The, the Lord must know, do waves of rotations or something. Because, uh, you know, if, 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 we tried it a couple of times on free food and fellowship. We get most people come. And we have just enough room. It seems like just enough people don't come <laughs> that we can fit everybody. But I have 30 more chairs in the back. So don't be afraid to keep inviting people to church. Can I get amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. We had an awesome, well, I'm going to let you, my wife go ahead and discuss or report to you about her Bible study this morning. Go ahead, man. Praise the Lord. Um, we had a great time at our Ladies Fellowship Bible Study this morning, and I, I'm just so thankful for all you ladies who did come. Um, we played some games, and even Grandma got into it. She was so funny. We did a purse scavenger hunt, and she was just having every single item just about that was called out over her teeth. <laughs> Go ahead, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> and we just had a great time in the Lord, and um, we did a study on Esther, and we just found out how we can purpose in our lives to um, just be more like, have more qualities like Esther had. And I just love the Lord and I'm so thankful that he allowed us to do that this morning. And I'm thankful for the spirit we feel here this afternoon. Did you guys eat all the food? Not all of it. Because I didn't see nothing come home. You were in the I was waiting for the food to come home. Nothing came home. These women tore it up. Praise God. When's the next one? Well, we're going to need to figure it out because it's I've decided... It's the third Sunday of the month. So I can do the second and fourth. Okay. So uh, the reason why I ask is because we are now having services at 3 o'clock. Uh, this gives us some opportunities to do things that are a little earlier for those that are looking to step up into a special forces relationship with, with God. You know, some of us want to be uh, troopers. We want to be, you know army infantry, but some of us need to be special forces. Some of us need to be those people who are going to be doing the, the, uh, the special ops and, and, and doing some deep special work for the Lord. And if you're one of those people, we're going to have on the second and fourth Sunday, I'm going to have leadership and ministry training meetings at the church at one o'clock. I'm um, having it at one o'clock so we can do one to two o'clock for, um, and actually I might do 12 o'clock. We'll say 12 o'clock because uh, I know me, I tend to get excited about what we're teaching and we probably go over an hour. But praise God, we'll go. 2 o'clock is going to be a choir practice and then uh, 2.30 is prayer and 3 o'clock. So you can extend. There are some people that need to, and I'm not criticizing you or putting you down, but some of us need to extend our time with God. 
you know, I'm, I'm actually trying to make the services more streamlined, but, but the, one service on Sunday is not enough. One service on Wednesday is not enough. And if you're not doing those two, we're not doing enough. But we've got to add some more for those people who are ready to be put to work by God. God is looking for an army. Can I get an amen? God's looking for some people to step up and to do the things that he requires to do a special work for God. Not just, not everybody was an apostle. Uh-oh. I'm not preaching. I'm just talking. Not everybody was an apostle, but there were apostles needed. And there were people who were also lay people who did their own work for God. And we need all of those in the church. Some, some people are never going to do anything for God and squeak their way into heaven and that's the way it is. But some of us are going to so, fall so in love with God. Like Sister Tiffany who drives all the way from Albuquerque to come to this church because she can't find another one like this one over there. That's the kind of special forces that we're talking about. Praise God. There's some of you that travel a distance right here. Uh, some people won't go farther than the next door to go to a church or they just won't go at all. Praise God. We're looking for uh, some, a few good men and women to do a work for God. So we're going to have every second and fourth Sunday and I'm going to keep giving you uh, updates about that as well as there's going to be specific people I'm going to be talking to that I'm going to be saying I want you there uh, because that's what you told me you wanted. So this is your opportunity to prove what you say you want to do. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. What you want, son? This boy is ready for camp. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm, don't, be, don't be frustrated. So we're going to get to it. You can start now. Um, but if you, what I need you to do is, Sister Amanda, I need you to come by my house after church. And then we'll just get you that paper because I have not, that's been my fault. Uh, and I'm also going to bring some to the church. Anybody who's interested in, the first thing that we want to do is give you a form that shows that we are a 501c3 organization, that all of their donations are uh, non-profit tax deductible. And we want you to start going to businesses and people. You can go door to door and say, listen, we're going to camp meeting as a church and we're trying to send our kids and our families to camp meeting. We'd like to know if you'd be willing to help us. And then uh, their donations are tax deductible. Uh, we're going to have a few fundraisers, uh, but I also need to let you know that we've got a lot of upcoming events, I, and I'm going to use some of that money for fundraisers for camp meeting, and one of the things I'd like to do is pay for the gas, but I'd like for each family, since we have so much time to demonstrate between now and then some, some maturity and some, what's the other word I'm looking for? Um, not frugalness, but something that, um, the, just demonstrate the ability, and what's that word? Um, uh, it'll come to me later. Uh, to demonstrate that we can save our money up until that time, it's $185 per person. Uh, seven and under is half that, and then two and under is free. Uh, but we need to be showing and demonstrating that we can put... And if you want us, if you want to give us the money, we'll put it in the church account for you, and we'll tally how much you've, you've saved, and we will hold that money for you. Some of us, it burns holes in our pockets, that money. <laughs> You know, it just doesn't... Anybody ever break a 50 and see how long it lasts? Break a 100 and see how long you keep it. If they give you 20s, it's over. We know this. So if you want to give it to the church, we will hold it for you and tell you how much you have. Uh, praise God, we need to try to save as much money as we can, but we're also going to do fundraisers. If you want to take that form and go out and, and raise the money by going to businesses for your family, that's fine too. We'll take that money, put it aside, and say this is for our family. We went out and, and, and got this money, and we'll put it aside for you. Uh, camp meeting is going to be an awesome time. I want as many people as possible to come. Sister Tiffany, was that your first? First camp meeting you got healed? Or your second? For her first camp meeting with us, she had a, a big old, well you can ask her, you can see it, she's got a big scar on her wrist. She, uh, a table fell on her and broke a glass table and sliced her open huge, like this big and this thick. I mean it was, it was awful. And her hand was really damaged and she couldn't really move it well and she had a big old brace and, and the Lord healed her. The guy asked, there's people right now who need healing and she raised her hand and, and faith and she took that thing off and started shaking her hands all around and she, ooh, come on somebody. She got healed. Praise God, praise God. But it's not just a place of healing, it's a place of fellowship. Ma'am? It's a place of fellowship. It's a place of, of, of excitement and fun. And we, there's rock climbing walls, zip lines, and, and pools. And they do all kinds of stuff, as well as having church twice a day. And we eat together as a church three times a day. And that 185 covers uh, th three days and four nights, is it? Four days and five nights or something like that? 
The whole time we're there between the 23rd and the 26th. And so it covers your room and your board and it's three meals a day. And so all you have to do is really, if we can make the money for the gas, for all the cars to get out there. Uh, but when we leave, everybody will be all set. So we want to do that. Uh, it's a fun time. It's an awesome time. And it's a time of fellowship. <clears throat> and importantly, we have a lot of newer people to, to the apostolic church. You get to see that we're not the only crazy ones around. There's churches from all over Texas and New Mexico just as crazy as us. And you get to see them and a fellowship with them and know that we're not alone. Can I get an amen? Yes. Praise God. Save your money for camp meeting. Uh, but the other money that we're going to be raising, we're, we've got all these things coming up on the first. Brother Pearson from the Calvary Apostolic Church. Uh, there are also an independent apostolic church in Albuquerque. Uh, they're mostly a black church, but they've also, they're like us. They've got um, black folks. They've got one family from, where's that, Paul? for Philippines and they have a white family and, and then they got the rest black so they, they're, they're like us a big melting pot they don't have well they have one Navajo when uh, sister grandma goes down there and when sister Francis goes down there they also got a Navajo praise the Lord she's been going to that church when they're in Albuquerque during the week uh, so bless God they're a multicultural church the pastor of that church brother Pearson will be coming here to preach on the first uh, we made great friends with these people I preached with them a couple of weeks ago we had a great time they've got another young man who's a preacher that I'd like to bring uh, when he was playing the drums uh, I felt like he might he might be willing to give us a message I was uh, having a good time watching him praise the Lord on May 6th 5th and 6th our good friends brother Harris and brother Flannery will be coming back for our three-year anniversary our three-year oh come on somebody our three-year anniversary service Woo! Just think about it. That's only, what, March, April? But two months away? In two months, it'll be three years we've been here. And no sign of slowing down. Can I get an amen? amen? Praise God. Brother Harris is my pastor. He will be preaching on Friday. Brother Flannery will be preaching on Saturday. Huh? I'm sorry. Brother Flannery, Brother Harris will be preaching on Saturday. And Brother Harris, Brother Flannery will be preaching. Man, I might be a little drunk on the Holy Ghost. Friday Harris, Saturday Flannery. Did I get it out right? Good. And we all know how Brother Flannery, Brother Harris is like everybody's grandpa. Sweetest man on the planet. Uh, and Brother uh, Flannery is just crazy. He, he's just crazy. He'll get up here and jump and shout and scream. And he might preach for an hour and 20 minutes. So be ready for church. Because every word of it will be anointed. Every single word of it will be anointed. Praise God. We're going to give out the same flyers that we did last time. We're going to make a big deal of it. Also, during that ceremony or during that service, uh, your pastor will be uh, becoming an ordained minister at New Hope Pentecostal Church. Brother Harris is going to become our uh, honorary board member and he is going to sign my ordination. And uh, this church is going to ordain me as the pastor and bishop of this church. Isn't that fun? We decided three years is a good time to prove that we've been here. We're not going anywhere. Praise God. So it's just going to be an all-around great time. Praise the Lord. Um, we're going to have a fellowship service with Brother Nathan's group. Uh, you know, he brings three or four churches and about 100 people when he comes. Uh, and we're going to get Brother Bip from Phoenix. He's a UPC Church of Phoenix. He is going to come preach for us. Uh, and we're just still... that time is to be announced. We're going to try to get that between now and, and, and between, between now and May. So maybe sometime in mid-April we're going to try to get him to come. And then we'll be going to camp meeting and then we'll have tent revival here sometime in, Ju and I, in June I believe. But that's also to be announced. So we got a lot going on. Can I get an amen? amen? We got a lot going on. This is going to be a fantastic spring. Uh, we're gonna, it's just going to bring a whole new fresh load of revival. It's going to bring more people getting baptized, more people getting the Holy Ghost. By the way, that baptism was nice and warm. Does anybody need to be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of their sins? That baptism will be ready every Sunday and every Wednesday because I'm ready. I'm ready for the revival to come. And it's coming. It's on its way. Can I get an amen? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Please don't bring any food or drink into the uh, sanctuary unless it's water. No gum either. Whenever I say that, people are like, mm. 
but try to, if your breath is, is needed some help, mints. Mints are good. <laughs> I use a spray. Because when I'm praying with people in the Holy Ghost, I don't want to knock them out. <laughs> come on, come on. Like, we, don't, we don't want that. Praise God. Praise the Lord, but please no gum. We, and I say that now because we have so much gum in that carpet out there. You, see, you ever see when the light shines on it, you see the dark flashy? That's all gum. There's like 10 patches of it out there somewhere. So we like to make sure that we don't do that. For the, for the um, resurrection service, which is what we call uh, resurrection because we don't really practice Easter. Easter is, is not quite a Christian thing. Uh, if you want to read about that, go look at my sermon from Easter last year. It was called Risen. Um, but we, we, fe we, we fellowship. We practice the resurrection Sunday. We focus on his resurrection. Not his death, but his resurrection. His resurrection power. That's what we focus on. So uh, what's normally called Easter, we call resurrection Sunday. And we will be having free, fo free food and fellowship on that day since it's you know a holiday time period and we will not be having free food and fellowship on the first Sunday that month it's going to be the second Sunday so that we don't have to cook twice because it's quite a job to make sure that we feed the whole church and uh, I don't think we're ready to be doing that twice yet uh, we have cards in the back free church cards please go ahead and grab some on the way out and give them out as you can see even if we left church right now powerful and anointed experiences have taken place already and we haven't even got to the preaching yet can I get an amen there's something here for people in this community who need a powerful move of God in their lives and so we are making that available praise God I'm going to be teaching Bible studies on modesty for anybody who asks me or is interested in, a, in, in modesty Bible studies all that is is that God takes the inside and begins to change the outside. And so if you're interested about those things, please come see me. And if you're interested in my modesty Bible studies and you want to teach them, please let me know. But until then, I'll be the only one teaching those until I train other people to do it appropriately. There's too many people condemning other people for how they dress and how they look and what they do and what they don't do. And we don't do that here. We are, we're merciful and patient with people and we know that God will change people. I don't have to yell at them, scare them into hell or do anything else to get people to change. God is able. Come on somebody. God is able to change people all by himself. He'll speak to people. Praise God. Um, Tuesday is choir practice and prayer. Six and seven. Six is prayer and seven is choir practice. Midweek service on set at seven o'clock on Wednesday. And of course Sundays at three from now on. Do you have anything man? Praise God. We're going to take up an offering. Those that are clapping are cheerful givers. Praise God. Praise the Lord. The Lord, for the last close to three years, every month has made it so that we could pay our bills, pay our mortgage. Uh, my wife and I do not, every time I get new visitors, I always say this. My wife and I do not take a salary. Uh, I'm not saying we never will, but we've never made enough for us to get a salary. Praise God. All the money that comes in is for the upkeep of this church, paying the mortgage, the lights, the heat bill, and everything else associated. Toilet paper and paper towels and all that good stuff. And we need the church to support the church. I have a, a secular job. I work full time. Uh, but I can't take care of both sets of bills. Can I get an amen? So why don't we stand and we're going to pray for this offering. Praise the Lord. We've had taxis and taxis always good. Praise the Lord. It's good all over town for business. It should be good for the church as well. If you give sacrificially, the Lord recognizes that giving. Yes. He recognizes any giving, but sacrificial giving, he goes, whoa, that is something special. Praise God. Why don't we extend our hands to the offering right now, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for all that we have. We thank you for all of your many blessings. We ask that you would bless this offering that is coming from the church. Let it be increased and multiplied as it's been for several years now to the upkeep of this church and to the blessing of this ministry to reach the lost of Gallup and beyond. In Jesus' name. And the church said amen. Somebody clap onto the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We have an offering march. If you walk towards the wall, come to the front. Make yourselves friendly. One to another. Shake somebody's hand. Say hello. Praise God. We declare your glory in this place.
take out the lights. We're going to call the choir to come. Praise the Lord. We have some of the greatest choirs in the world available to us through technology. Praise the Lord. We don't have choir yet, but, but in faith, we've already bought our choir robes. We have choir robes that actually match our church. They're like vanilla and burgundy. And uh, we bought them from one of my wife's friends in another church. And uh, How many do we have? 22 of them? Bunch of them. So we're going to have a choir eventually. We've already got the robes. We just need to fill them. Find some people. Ooh, some singers, yes. Uh, but until then, we have the blessing of technology, and we're going to utilize that blessing. Um, and I'm going to ask that you just allow yourself to let the Holy Ghost begin to move on you. Uh, in this place, there's not much quenching of the Spirit, and I love that about this church. But one thing that we do have is a little inhibition that still just holds us back. And, and if we could get to that place of having no inhibition at all, and just there would be an explosion that would take place in this church spiritually. An explosion. And that's the kind of church that I'm looking for. Can I get an amen? amen? Praise God. God is good. Why don't we go ahead and begin. Oops, let me plug it in. Mm -hmm. Friends, I want you to send up a hallelujah. We won the victory tonight. We're going to worship him for who he is. We're victorious through Jesus Christ. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we acknowledge you are in this place. Now this song we takes open some ourselves up, up God. And Listen we ask that you move in this house like never world. before. Move in this place like Praise never before. God.
grave is not is not occupied any longer hallelujah Woo, praise God praise God hallelujah 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 oh thank you Lord anybody ready to really praise the Lord now we got some worship going on but I'm ready to praise the Lord I'm ready to praise his mighty name
I got an overcoming spirit in my heart right now. I believe you can overcome. I have overcome. You can overcome because of that name of Jesus. Woo! Somebody should be excited right now. Somebody should just want to shout. Somebody should just have an explosion of the spirit right now. Woo! Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Anybody need a victory? Anybody need a victory? Nobody needs a victory? I need a victory. So I'm going to go ahead and shout under my God. God, I need a victory. God, I need you to hear me right now. I need you to send your angels. I need you to send the troops right now into my life. I need a victory. Woo, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pray. Just because you overcome don't mean you're done. <laughs> Just because you've overcome just means it's just the beginning. That's it. But we are more than overcomers. Can I get an amen? amen. Praise God. If I could have those lights in the back. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead and open up our Bibles. I think we're ready. Anybody ready for the word? Yes. We've just soiled. We've just gotten the soil all tilled up and all watered with living water now it's time to plant in that seed children's church uh, can be dismissed right now the young people can go ahead and go on back praise the lord hallelujah mm, mm, mm. I'm, I'm grateful for technology we just get to have the best until until the lord sends and sends the workers we've got the best from all over the country, praise God. Uh, I've just got a whole bunch of, I was, as the ladies were doing their thing this morning, I was at home babysitting, left me with the kids. I'm sure she loved that one. It's your turn. <laughs> but I was nice, I even was willing to take your kids. You didn't get my message? Oh, well fine then, wait till I see them later. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go take Tiffany's kids too because I know I want them women to have some fun but it sounds like they had fun anyway praise God but I'm here to tell you that I found some really good music my favorite Christian entertainer and just please bear with me as I, I, I get to where I'm going I'm not in a hurry are you in a hurry I'm really having fun today and it's all ugly outside you ain't got nothing to do but go home and, and sit in front of TV anyway or something like that so we're going to hang out for a while I won't be here all day don't worry I could do it, but some of y'all can't hang yet. Praise the Lord. But uh, I just want to tell you, I, I found some, my favorite entertainer for Christian worship music is Israel Houston. Anybody know? Israel and Newbury. Ooh. Last summer, my, my wife and I went, or was it the year before last? I think it was the year before last. We went to the state fair, uh, and we were just going with the family, and we didn't know Israel was going to be there. And we got like from here, it was like front row seat with Israel. Oh, it was amazing. We had so much fun and uh, I just found a whole bunch of good music. I can't say I agree with the church that he's in, but that's all right. I, I, don't, I just want his music. Praise God. Uh, if you don't know, he goes to Joel Olstein's church. He is probably one of the, he's probably the music director or something. And I'm not a big fan of Joel Olstein, but I'm not mad at him either. I used to be, but it's not my job to judge him. My job is to work on me and the people that the Lord put in my life to help as a pastor. Can I get an amen? <laughs> to put it nicely, uh, so I'm not advocating for the church, even though it'd be nice to have, you know, 20,000 people in church on a Sunday. That wouldn't be bad. But can you, I don't know if, I don't know if you guys can handle 20,000 apostolics in the same room. The only time I've seen that is camp meeting. And boy, to do that every Sunday, there are some people who just blow up in the spirit. They just walk in and pop, boom, that'd be it. Praise God. I believe that something happens when you put a lot of focus and an entirety of your mindset on the Holy Ghost. Uh, I, I'm not one to say that everything's okay and everybody's okay. I'm one to say that the Word of God is okay. Can I get amen? That's where I've got to be. That's my point of reference and I can't leave that. Uh, but I'm excited to get that music uh, and, and we'll be listening to it here and there until we get our choir together. I want to make sure that we have some new stuff every once in a while because even though I can listen to the same song I can listen to Jesus said it every Sunday and just freak out and but some of us can't do that I could do that every Sunday I just put it on and just, woo! 
I never get sick of some of some of them songs. <laughs> so anointed. Praise God. But if you open up your Bibles to Genesis chapter 2, we are going to get into the Word of God. I'm just so grateful to have all of you here. And it's so nice, like I said, to have all our visitors. <sighs> Genesis chapter 2, we're going to be talking about for the next four weeks or so, or four sermons or so, I've got to preach a series. I was going to try to do it in one day and I realized that it's just not going to do it justice to do it in one day. We are going to be talking about falling away. And the last falling away that I'm going to talk to you about is the great falling away. Uh, when I was talking to a friend of mine who was a pastor, uh, we were talking about this issue of the great falling away and trying to, you know, debate on when it, has it happened yet, is it happening now. And, and personally, I believe there is a series of four significant falling away periods. And we're going to talk about the first one this week. And then we're going to go on to the next one. And I'll give you a brief overview right now as you're opening up to Genesis 2.15. The first one is Adam and Eve when they fell away from God. And then you have the Jews when they were out in the wilderness. And when they were delivered from uh, Egypt, they had a significant, in my eyes, falling away. Um, and then you have the time period in which the Jews rejected Jesus. Uh, he made himself very clear and plain to them. And, 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 and if you read the Bible, it's, it's clear they even had an idea that this man is significant, but he's going to change our ways and we don't like it. And so we need to, we need to hide his strength and his reality of who he is. Uh, read read your, your Gospels. It's amazing how they said things like, we have, if people continue to see this, they're going to know who he is. And we need to hide that because it's going to change our way of power. And uh, then you have, of course, when the Antichrist comes on the scene and says, I am God. You're going to have a whole bunch of people who call themselves Christians receive that mark because they're not ready for the tribulation. They're not ready to go through that kind of, uh, of they want everything to be easy. And that's what we've become as, uh, oh, can I, oh boy, I better, ooh, I better be careful. I might step on some toes. Uh, we become weak. We want all the blessings, but we don't want any pain, no suffering. But the Bible talks about the fellowship of his suffering. But they don't want to look at that. They want to look at the blessings and the gimmies and, and the, the beatitudes and, and I'm going to have everything I want. No, I'm sorry. When the end comes, it's going to get ugly. The good news is it's only going to be for a short time. And then it's eternity. That's why it says those that endure until the end will be saved. But I'm here to tell you, church, there's a great number of people who believe that we're going to be taken away before any tribulation comes. That's a lie from the devil. You can, we went over it last week, and I'm sorry, I, I forgot to plug in the stinking sound, and, and, and I, didn't, I didn't put it online because you know, so I'm going to have to preach it again someday. Was, we didn't have that many people. I think we're going to have 35 here anyway. I might preach it on Sunday again. But the tribulation, it's going to happen. It talks about it. And then it says, immediately following the tribulation, in Matthew 24, 29, I think it is, immediately following the tribulation, then Jesus will come. If you don't believe me, come see me after church. We'll go over it. I don't get mad at you. We'll just, you can argue with the word of God. I don't argue with people. I present the word. Here it is. Do you believe it or not? If you don't, it's okay. I still love you. But this is what I got to follow. Right here. That's what I got to follow. So, there's going to be a series of several falling aways. And then there's going to be a great falling away. But we're going to talk about the first one in Genesis 2.15. It says, and the Lord God. I'm sorry, God. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden. He was to dress it and to keep it. Verse 16, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Go ahead and put your Bibles down. Let's pray. Jesus, Oh, let us receive what we are about to hear directly from the Word of God. Let the anointing of God come upon us as we receive and hear the preaching. Let this preacher be blessed of God as he brings forth the Word to the congregation. Let us have open minds and open hearts to understand and have wisdom that we might have victory and overcome and endure till the end. In Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. Somebody clap one more time unto the Lord. 
Praise God. When you're done, you may be seated. <clears throat> now, I'm going to get you now. Because see, when I said when you're done, you should be seated. You should have stood up and clapped for 20 minutes. That's the kind of audience he deserves. But that's all right. We'll get there someday. Someday when I say you may be seated, you're going, I'm going to open it up. And say when you're done, you can be seated. Y'all could just jump and dance and let the Holy Ghost pour out like crazy. And then we'll preach. But we had fun up until now. I believe the Holy Ghost has been very present. I think it's just been anointing of God all over this place. And now it's time for us to get some word. Now, let me just tell you first, several people have heard of the story of Adam and Eve. And I'm not going to go into detail over the whole thing. But there are some details that not everybody really always catches. And so uh, I also don't want to assume that everybody knows the story because not everybody does. Uh, I'm blessed to have a church that has newer people in it. And if you don't have new people in your church, then you need to do something with your church. It should be full of people who know God, people who don't know God, and people who are right in the middle. And, and hopefully the, the people who know God group will grow and the people who don't know God group will will shrink and the ones in the middle will shrink and then we'll just bring in some more. We'll have a nice rotation, praise God. That's the way it should be. If you don't have any sinners in the pews of a church, that's like a dentist's office with no patients. Or going to the dentist with no teeth. You know, we need to have the lost in the church. And fortunately, I don't have to say this church, but I'm just saying in general that we need to be patient with those uh, who are new and who are still in, in, in the process of learning about God. Uh, but this church has been very patient, very merciful, and I'm very blessed to have a church uh, that has been willing to follow my request that we do so. Because it's important. Uh, if you scare away the sinners and we have just a bunch of uh, my four and no more, uh, we're not doing God's job. Can I get an amen? Who's here to do God's job? I'm not the only one here to do God's job. We need to have a church full of people ready to do the work of God. Uh-oh. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I can see it, but you can't. Oh, there you go. Okay. Praise the Lord. In the Garden of Eden, they were given very clear direction. And you know, God is so, is so merciful that he generally gives very clear instruction. He told them, look, you can have everything here. Man, sometimes I get so mad. When I see Adam, when I go to heaven, me and Adam are going to talk. I'm going to be like, thanks, bro. For 40 years of working, thanks. You know, if he didn't, if he would have done what God said, today we would just be kicking back, man. We wouldn't have to work. We'd, we'd have everything provided for us. But because of this falling away, the first falling away, we got, aren't you, you really going to be mad? You don't, who likes to work? Oh, all the hands stay down. It depends if you like your job. Some of I, I kind of like my job, but I'd rather be home kicking, and or I'd rather be out being a full time minister, or you know, playing paintball every day. I don't know, swimming, boating, fishing. I'd love to do that every day. But praise God, we have to work because of this falling away of Adam and Eve. Now, they were given the ability. This whole garden. Free access to do whatever they like. They just, isn't it funny how we're just like that? You can have everything except this one right here. And they're like, oh, wow, I like that one. See, when you're told you can't have this one, all of a sudden, all the other ones become important. All these other ones are really not as interesting because you told you can't have this one. Oh, isn't it just like us? You can have anything you want, just don't touch that one. Mm. That one looks really good. That's how our flesh is. God says you can do whatever you want in your lives. You can choose whatever job you want. You can do is all you got to do is you got to go to church, read your Bibles, pray, don't worship any other gods before me, keep sin out of your life, and you can do whatever you want. Everything else you can do what you want. Just keep those things out. But what do we want? Yeah, but man, that bar. Every time I drive by Classic, I see all them cars. I want to know what they're doing. They look like they're having fun. You know, we want, to, we're drawn to that thing. Uh, that's why you got to be careful with teenagers. You stay away from them boys. You stay away. The girl's like, mm-hmm. Why does she want me to stay away from them boys? Come here. Come over. I mean, they're, they're, you just want everything you can't have. That, that's part of our nature. 
But we've got to break that nature of the flesh. I'm going to be preaching a message about the idea of thirsting and hu hungering and thirsting for righteousness. And one of the things we need to do is get out of the flesh. But you can't get out of the flesh unless you operate in the spirit. It's impossible to escape the flesh. Every one of us, every day is going to be tempted. Did you watch? Oh, you didn't watch this, this morning, did you? Brother Terry tore it up. He gave me a sermon. I'm, I'm going to preach it, but I'll give him credit. But I'm going to preach it. It was good. But we all are going to have struggles with the flesh. And that's exactly what happened with Adam and Eve. They were told, listen, you can't mess with it or you're going to die. If you go to Genesis 3 and 1, we're going to find out why they messed up. It's the same reason why we mess up. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 <clears throat> it says very clearly now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God made let's just stop there for a second I've said this before but I, I think it's important to reiterate the enemy doesn't come out. You know how you have those voices that come in your head to tell you to do the wrong thing? Those feelings of drawn to do the wrong thing, but then you get the same exact other feeling that you know it's wrong? See, there's a spirit, a battle, the spirit of flesh, but we know what's right and wrong. I mean, most of the church, I don't have to sit there and give you a list of sin. If I were to ask each and every one of you, what is it you need to get rid of, you'd probably be able to tell me right away. Well, this is my problem right here. This is my list. We know what's wrong. The spirit, we already have a measure of faith when we're born. So we understand what's right and wrong, and we've got to fight that draw to what's wrong. Now what's going to draw us to what, see God's going to draw us to what's right. What's going to draw us to what's wrong? Louder. Who? The devil, through sin, you're correct. Through sin, the devil's going to try to draw us, and that's exactly what happened to Adam and Eve. Here comes a serpent, but, but he was slick. That's one thing you've got to understand. It is not this big old red skin and, and pitchfork and, and Go do this. It's like, hey, why don't you try this? Watch, I'll prove it to you. He comes up to Eve and says, and he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said you should not eat of every tree of the garden? See, he tries, what he, <laughs> he tries to make a partial truth, or make a truth, and then take the partial lie and add it to truth. If you notice, a lot of times the enemy will come at you with good things and throw in some bad. Because remember, all he's got to do is get you to miss the mark. So all he's got to do. So he takes what's true to Eve, didn't he say? Every tree? Now, no, he didn't say every tree. He said every tree but this one. So that means no, it's not every tree. That's how the enemy comes at you. Well, it's not completely wrong. It's, you're not a terrible person if you do this. Well, we're not talking about being a terrible person. We're talking about being a Christian. Because if you're a Christian and you do this, then no, you're not a Christian. Or you're a Christian who's failing. And we don't want to be failing Christians. We want to be victorious Christians. So the enemy will come with this partial truth. Didn't he say? You can have any, eat of any tree. And she said, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. Or we may, we may eat of the fruit. But in verse 3 it says, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said, ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. So, she knew. Let, let, let's, let's just back up for a second. This wasn't an accident. And neither is sin in our lives. You don't walk down the street and all of a sudden poof a beer is in your hand. Well, how'd that happen? Oh, it must be the Lord. I should drink it. <laughs> I don't think so. You don't just walk down the street and next thing you know you're in someone's house alone with some woman or some man. There's a whole bunch of pre-steps that... that that was before pre prerequisites like, hey, how you doing? Hey, sis, what's going on? You look nice in that dress, girl. <laughs> you know, I've got some, I got some lunch in my house. Would you like to come up to my apartment and have some lunch? And you're like, no one. Well, but he's cute. The butts, man, butt is awful. That is a dangerous word. I know I'm not supposed to do it, but 
he is fine. She is beautiful. This, that, and other. You make up your own excuse. You fill in the blanks. We make up those excuses to do wrong. So you just don't end up in sin. You make a decision. She repeated to the enemy. She knew what God said. She said it. Yeah, I can have every tree except this one. Let's find out what happens. <clears throat> Verse 4, And the serpent says unto the woman, You're not going to die. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Because in, in, in some respects he was correct. And that's what he was using is that some partial correctness because she wasn't going to fall over dead. That's not the kind of death that God was talking about. And the enemy knew that. The serpent knew that. Yes, she wasn't going to fall over dead, but there was going to be a spiritual death that took place as a result of disobeying God. Man, how far can I take that? How many of us are going to disobey God and begin to slowly die because of our behavior? And because we know that when sin is finished, it brings forth death. But when it starts, it starts out real small. One little justification and, and, and then we kind of, hey, see, nothing bad happened. And then we feel comfortable with that and we do it again and then we do more. And next thing you know, you're doing stuff you never dreamed that you would do. And now you're, you're keeping secrets because you can't even really talk about what you're doing because you're calling yourself a Christian or proclaiming to want to live for God. But now you got skeletons in the closet. Now, now, now what you know what you are? A hypocrite. And the Bible says be sure your sins will find you out. So you think that they're going to be hidden but you've got to understand, especially with the pastor, it's so funny. People, because they don't tell me, think I don't know. But I can see a change in people. I would say in you, because I want to be like, well, me, I didn't do it. In people, you can see a change. Watch. Man, they're coming to church, they're on fire, they're, they're singing, and they're sitting in the, close to the front, and then, you know, they're just talking, oh, pastor, I'm reading my Bible, and this is awesome, and next thing you know, they're sitting a little further back. Next thing you know, they're not talking to me anymore. The next thing you know, they're, they're out the door. Right? What happens? You're not talking about God as much. You're not as excited about God as much. And you're not getting involved in that fire of God. And then the pastor goes, what's going on? Oh, nothing. Now, I may not see someone going drinking in the weekend or buying a bottle and bringing it home or, or whatever the sin may be sneaking the boys over to the house or go start dating men who are not in the church or dating men period and, and getting involved in behavior you shouldn't be doing whatever it is I may not see it on you I may not see you in, the, you know, in some place doing something you shouldn't be doing but I can see the spiritual dimension change in each person that starts to get involved with sin and you know what the first thing that happens is? The person will get frustrated with you that you brought it up. Well, how do you know? Even though they're doing it. And I don't know, but I do know. Something. It, and you know what? It doesn't have to be big. I might not, it might be small. It might be big. But I don't know. All I do is what? Talk to the church and say, listen, I'm concerned. Well, you, you, know, you ain't got to worry about me. That's when, oh Lord, now that I know they're in trouble. Don't worry about me. That's when I know I have to worry. Praise God. Listen, the enemy is subtle. Comes in, whispers on these little things and tries to get you to accept things like, you're not going to die. You'll be okay. And wants you to believe it. The funny thing is in our lives, we have never been okay in the past with doing old behavior. It's never been okay. It's always led to damage, destruction, and corruption. But it's insidious. It's that lie that sneaks in and says, but I can do this and be okay. What's the definition of insanity? Repeating the same behavior over and over again and expecting something different to happen. That's crazy. So we end up, but you know what sin does? Sin makes us crazy. Sin makes us absolutely nuts. So I'm trying to tell you about the first falling away, but also tell you how it, how it associates with us. Look at how many people. It's so funny too. We're missing what? 20, 30 people in church today. Now, some of it's because of the weather, I know. But it's so funny. Every time I'm missing a group of people, I got 12 more over here. This first, second time visitor, first time visitors. 
and, and, and a new family just started coming to church. He's new. And, and God just keeps filling it up. Every time people leave, God just keeps sending more. But what I like to have happen is for everybody to just stay. And then, you know, no, 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 no. I say everybody. I say the majority because not everybody's always going to stay. We know that. But the fact is, is that we would already be running psh, 150 right now. If we didn't have these cycles of people who are, but you know what I love about God is we always have people in church. Always have people. If someone leaves, God always fills their seats. Doesn't matter what happens, God's going to, that's what I don't, I, I don't worry about it because I know God is going to fill the seats. But we have in Gallup today a falling away. People don't want to go to church. Now I don't know why it's so much fun. Did you have fun today? Did you have fun today? You, how old are you? 16, did you have fun today? Wasn't awesome? You ain't got to be at the bar. You ain't got to be drinking, smoking weed somewhere. We can be in the presence of God having a good old time and be okay and still have a long life and have no sin and be okay with God. It's awesome. Why people don't want to go to church, I don't understand. I can't wait for church every single week. But this is why that little voice says that something is better than obeying God. Something is better than listening. And it's the enemy that's going to sneak in and cause offenses. I've, I've got to eventually preach on uh, offenses. Uh, offended and offense is, is a sermon I've got coming down the line. But that's one of the ways the enemy works. Getting you guys offended with each other or getting you offended with me. Fortunately, it hasn't been until, or else. Uh, and this church has been more, the, the, like we're talking about the parables, the parable of the talents. Or the seat sower, I'm sorry. <clears throat> it's usually this, it's the world sucking people back out. People get persecuted and, and, and they feel embarrassed about being a holy roller. I call myself a holy roller. I call myself a Bible thumper. Proudly. You, you're going to make fun of me with that. Somebody called me narrow-minded one day. I was like, well, praise God. I'm doing the right thing because I don't need to be broad-minded. I need to be narrow-minded. You bring in too much, man. You just bring in everything. You'll stand for anything. You've got to stand for the main thing or the right thing, the righteousness, the thing that God wants us to stand for. That's what we need to stand for. And it's not everything. It's not all inclusive. It's a narrow path. It says that in the Bible. So we're in a position, I, I want the church to learn before we get to the great falling away. I want us to learn about the, the, the core. How did it happen from the beginning? It was that same thing. Just not be willing to listen to God. God's going to send people in your life and he's going to send situations in your life to guide and teach you. If you're coming to this church and you're going to make me your pastor, then God's going to help me lead you. Period. And, and if you're thinking about finding a home church for you people who are visiting, just so you know, it's not my job to control you. If that's what you're looking for, you're in the wrong place. I'm not going to do it. I'm not here to control anybody. My, my job is to spiritually direct and guide the church. And I, it's like breadcrumbs. I throw them bread of life. I throw it. And you can come get it or you can not get it and you'll end up going and you won't get fed. Or you'll get fed the thing you don't want to eat. That poison. That junk food that's out there. You don't want junk food. You want healthy food. You don't want processed food. That doesn't help you. You want nutrients. Things that are going to give you life. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Mm. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to give you life. I'm going to lead you and guide you. But if you decide you don't want to do what I'm saying, I will just smile at you and say, you know, I love you so much. Praise God. Uh, and, and you know what? This is the crazy thing. Sometimes the decision that the person wants to make might be better than what I had. As long as it's a spiritual one. Because you know yourself better than I do. But I know the Bible better than most people come to the church. And so there are things that I see that I might say, hey, listen, this is what some, you, I'm worried about this. And you should listen. And if you don't, and it goes okay, that's fine. But what you'll find the majority of the time, because of this enemy, who is what? He's subtle. He is going to trick you. And so the whole purpose of the ministry is set up to be a five-fold ministry. We have pastors, evangelists, preachers, teachers. It, it shows you a way out. And so when you get that trick, because you're going to, listen, do you live in the flesh? I don't know anybody who's been translated in here. I sure haven't been. I still live in this flesh, and I can't poke no hole in it without bleeding. You can poke a hole in my side, and blood's going to gush out, because I'm not translated, and neither are you. So we're always going to have this battle and there's going to be an attempt to trick you. And it's easier for the enemy to trick you directly because you have something to gain from it. 
But when you have an outside source who's involved, I've got nothing to gain from the trickery the enemy's trying to put on you. So sometimes, and oftentimes, I can see through the trick. Because it's not my flesh that's getting tempted. It's someone else's. And it works the same thing with sisters and brothers and family in the church. When you come together and you say, man, I've been struggling and, and the other person might be able to help you. My job is not to control people. My job is to offer spiritual food. And if you eat it, most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to grow healthy. And if you don't and you go to junk food, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to get sick. And that's what we try to prevent in the church. But when someone goes the wrong direction, I love them. I'm not going to get mad. I ain't gonna, Listen, praise God, I'll, I'll do whatever you need me to do. If you need me to do something, say sorry. If you need me, if, as long as it's within my realm to do it, I'll do it. But I might have to tell you no. See, that's when you really know when someone's serving. When you're in a position of teaching, this is obedience. Because see, this one should have told the devil no. But you know who they told no to? God. Because they said, yes, I'm going to follow the enemy instead of follow God. Watch, I'll show you. And I'm gonna, we're going to go back to that in a second. And the woman saw that the tree was good. She was tricked. Just like, and when it says woman, I, I make all of it because I don't want any women to get mad at me. When I say women, that includes all of us. Because us men, well, you're going to see here about Adam in a minute too. She saw it was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes. And the tree was desired to make one wise. And she took the fruit thereof and ate it and gave it also to her husband or to, that was with her. And he did eat. When she ate, she said no to God. Because she knew what it said. She repeated it, and we hear it in the Word of God, that she knew what she wasn't supposed to do, and she did it anyway. So she said no to God, and yes to Satan. And was disobedient. When the pastor is trying to give you direction, again, something sinful. I've had people tell me, uh, man, I, I just, I just got to go do it one more time when it comes to the drugs and alcohol. I have to let them go. And they're saying no, because see I've been there. I was a drug addict and alcoholic. And I've been removed from that lifestyle from the power of God. So since I've been there, I have some understanding about it. And I'll say, listen, if you do X, Y, and Z, this is going to happen. They say, but I, I'm sorry, I, I, just, I just can't stop. Then I have to let them go. And they do X, Y, Z. And 99.9% .9 of the time, it happens. Why? Because when you light a fire and you put it towards something, it catches on fire. That's the way it is. Sin is the same thing. When you get involved in sin, it's going to cause corruption and disruption and destruction. So what we want to do as a church is we want to say yes to God and no to the enemy. Not vice versa. And if we find ourselves not taking direction in the church... That's a good possibility. It's going to go down the wrong road. And I've watched it over and over again. But understand, all I can do is, and I'll always make that phone call. Hey, where you been? I haven't seen you, man. Love you. Where, where you at? Where you at? Everything okay? And they'll say, oh, no, I'm, I'm struggling. I said, okay, well, I love you. But I, I had this conversation just yesterday with someone. This is where this is coming from. Uh, there was a, a young person, young man I was talking to. And I won't say names because it's not important. Uh, but... I'm usually very comical. I like to laugh. Very comical. I like to, you know, there's nothing wrong with having fun in church. Do you see anything wrong with having fun in church? I sure don't. I love having fun in the church. But sometimes you got to be serious. And I told this young man, I said, look, uh, all jokes aside, we got to get serious. We have to get serious. This is no time to be messing around with the enemy. This is no time to be slowing down with God. We need to be moving forward. We need to be getting right. We need to be doing what's required. We need to be obeying, reading, following, trusting, and being obedient and faithful to the house of God. This is no time to play games. Do you realize how close we're coming? You know, I, I just, I'm just waiting for that day that just gives that indication. Here it is. Boom, no question. There it is. Man, what's going to happen? And this, people are just going to come in droves to God. 
But we don't know what we're going to be checking out, church. We can't be messing around with God. Uh, we had just had all these shootings in Gallup the other day. Two, two people walking down the street and father and son, boom, boom, dead. One shot in the head, one shot in the heart, dead. I don't know which story they were coming out of. There was three shootings, four shootings, so who knows where it was. Gone, just like that. Joe Rodriguez just got diagnosed with leukemia. Three months to live. Bam, just like that. Now, now I believe the Lord had been working on him before, but if he was already spiritually strong in God, see, now we're having to try to reach out and get him. We're trying to, because he's so depressed and so distraught that he, he just, he's, he's isolated, he's depressed, he's in anxiety, he's hurt. But you've, we've got to be ready for these times, church. We've got to be ready. We've got to have our foundations built up so strong that we can't be moved by anything. So that when those things happen in our lives, What's going to happen if you get diagnosed with something? What are you going to do? Oh, come on, somebody. What's going to happen to you right now if you got diagnosed one month to live? Would you fall apart and run, run away? Or would you be, would you stay, Pastor, I got one month to live. Pastor, this is, I'm going to get right with God. I'm going to, I'm going to get into the church and I'm just going to trust God. And, 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 and might even, I'm going, to, I'm going to try to get even a little excited that I'm going to see my God. Doesn't that sound crazy to you? That doesn't sound crazy to me. Because see, that's, that's what I think about. Well, I want to see my son grow up, you know. I, I, I want to see what's going to happen in this world. I've got more souls to say. I want to reach out to more lost. And I want to do more for God. And I want to do more in my life. But you know what, God, if it's my time, I'm just going to get excited. That I get to see you. I'm going to be an optimist. Half full, not half empty. In the glass. But it all starts here. In the original falling away. And we need to understand the concept of falling away. So we don't end up the one that falls away. Praise God. She eats of the fruit. You know what's crazy is there is a, a group of people. I won't say their names. <clears throat> if any of them are watching they'll know who they are. There is a group of people that actually believe, this, this is so important, just, I've got to throw this in here right now, and then I'm almost done. There is a people, group of people who believe that it was actually good that she ate of the fruit, and that she gave it to her husband. They believe that it was a good thing, that, see, she was going to get wise. It says that she saw that it was good for food and that she was going to get wise, and, and, and she did eat it. That was the previous scripture, but uh, you should be in the same spot in your Bibles. So, see, it was good, because she got wise. Have you not read the rest of the scripture? Believe it or not, there is a whole group of people, they think it was a great thing that she disobeyed God. It's a wonder that there are so many things beyond the belief system that are so out of whack. It's amazing because they don't understand the concept of the original falling away. I'm going to probably be a little bit more, I'm not, I, I like these people, I'm not trying to be mean, but then you get into this concept of protective underwear. I got to wear something, to, a symbol that protects me. I got a symbol and his name is Jesus. I don't need to wear nothing on my body that's going to protect me. I got to wear the blood of Jesus on me and I'm going to be all right. I don't need to put something on me like some kind of armor. I got the armor of God. I don't need other stuff to protect me. There's a special places you can go that nobody else can go. You got to reach a certain level of, of, of grace or whatever to go into the next level. Listen, you can come in this church. You can go in any room in this church you want to. Now I'm not, some of these people got some great stuff. They, they, they're home by 9 o'clock and they got more outreach. They blow everybody out of the water with their outreach. But they don't understand some of the basic concepts. They've added on these whole things that are not even in history to the Bible. And they say it's not an addition. It's just kind of uh, a modern day thing. And I'm, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't go there. The Bible's very clear. But they don't understand the basic concept of falling away. There was a disobedience that led to destruction. If you reap in the flesh, you will sow. I'm sorry, if you sow in the flesh, you will reap corruption. Period. Let's go to verse 14. It says, The Lord God said unto the serpent, let, let's, let's let the Bible answer this question. These people say that it's actually good 
that these people ate of the fruit. Let's find out if that's true through the word of God. I don't know how anybody could read this and think what they think. I don't know if it's a spirit or, or if it's just blinders. I don't understand it because the word is so clear. Verse 14 says, And Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, which is to cause them, just because the serpent caused them to do this, he was punished. And says, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. Upon the belly thou shalt go, and the dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. I don't know about you, but being cursed doesn't sound like a good thing to me. It sounds very clear that they were not pleasing unto God. Verse 15 says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy heel, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Or bruise thy head and... Uh, she will bruise your heel, you know, because she, they're down there and they're going to be stepped on and all that good stuff. Verse 16. So that's, that's the consequence of the, the snake or the serpent. He is going, or the enemy is going to be made into, uh, on his belly and, and being lowly and cursed. Verse 16. And unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multitude thy sorrow. Somebody say sorrow. Thy sorrow. Does everybody understand what sorrow is? Sorrow's not good. Please tell me how this is a good thing that this woman who did this thing is getting her sorrows multiplied. It is because she did wrong, not because she did right. And it says in thy conception, that's when the sorrow is going to be, and the sorrow shall bring forth children, and thy desire shall be thy husband, to, be, to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. That doesn't sound good to me. Verse 17, it says, and unto Adam. So everybody here who did this is getting charged up by God. So first is the serpent, then it is uh, Eve, now Adam. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it, cursed. Somebody say cursed. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and also thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herbs of the field. Now, please explain to me how anyone could think that it was a good thing that these individuals disobeyed God. It was clear in the scripture that it was not okay with God. But it's that same mentality. Please hear me church. Because we can all be infected with this sickness and this blindness. This person or these people were clearly told not to do these things. And we have people today who are saying it's a good thing. There's got to be something. It happens to us when we see something clearly we're not supposed to do. And we do it anyway, even though we get, they ever get that feeling like, this just isn't, I really shouldn't be doing this. But if you fight it for long enough, that feeling will go away. And then you're in trouble. Because now you're working on a seared conscience. Because your conscience could save you. Your conscience tells you, hey listen, you know better than this. We should not do this. And if you're not full of God's spirit, you'll fight with that. Your flesh will say, yeah, but look at all the benefits. Look, at, look, look what we'll get out of it. This is why we should do it. And then you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? We, get, we, we, we talk ourselves through a little whisper of the enemy. We talk ourselves into doing what we know we're not supposed to do. We've got to understand. It, but if we know the word of God. See, Adam was standing there. It says very clearly that she handed the fruit to him. I stopped calling it an apple because uh, we don't know if it was an apple or not. Okay? It doesn't say apple. It says fruit. It could have been a grape. Who knows? It could have been... Kiwi or, you know, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> it, it, it could have been an uh, orange. Who knows? But the fact of the matter is, it was a fruit and she handed it to him. You know what that means? I'm going to talk to the men for a second. He was sitting right there. While the devil was talking to his wife. I don't know if he was cutting his nails or something. 
But I don't know about you, but if I'm standing here and the devil's talking to my wife, there's going to be an interject going on here. Excuse me. This is my wife. You need to back off. But he was too busy doing something. I don't know what he was doing. And this conversation's going on? People want to blame Eve all the time. And it does say that she was the one that was tricked. She was. But you can't, you can't ignore that Adam was standing right there. And Adam was first. He was the created. He was the head. And he should have intervened and said, hey, look, you're not going to talk to my wife. If you want to talk to my wife, you talk to me first. Because I will deal with you. So uh, I always say I'm going to talk to Adam because, you know, he should have he should have been the man. He should have done something about what happened. But what Eve got in trouble with is having a conversation with the devil. Why in the world, and you know, it's funny, I hear people, evangelists talking about, and, 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 I, and I've done this in the past, you know, I'm going to tell the devil, and I, I'm going to tell you right now, that is actually what I used to do. And I guess if that's where you're at, that's okay, but there's a better way. And I've, I've mentioned it in this church before, but it's, it's, it's legitimate to this sermon, and, and these new people haven't heard it. Yeah, you can, you can start having that conversation with the devil, and I'm going to beat you up, and I'm going to fight you, and I'm going to take you out. And, and, and yes, you know, you're, you're not going to be the way I'm going to. You can give me all the suggestions you want, and I'm not going to follow them. Yeah, that's fine for, for the beginning. But what we want to get, and we're talking about these elite special forces people. This is where you want to get to, is when the enemy begins to talk to you, and you turn your head. And the enemy says something else, and you don't go, huh? You turn your head. And the enemy says something else, and you turn your head again. What's the key factor that's not going on here? Huh? You're not responding to the question. Because see, if you keep getting enough questions, eventually he'll find one you'll say yes to. Mm, somebody, come on. Eventually, he'll, because he's not going to give up. He's going to keep, well, what about this? No. Well, what about that? No. Well, what about this? Well, hmm. That one. We have something there. So he asks you, he, he begins, hey, psst, psst. you don't even go there. I'll tell you the proper response. And he says, psst, oh Jesus, my God, I love you. Psst. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Where's my Bible at? Oh, I'm just going to read my word. And, uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to give the Lord the praise. Oh, why don't I remember? Why don't I remember what God has done for me? Oh, Jesus. Let him get as loud as he wants. Hey, oh, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let him shout as loud as he wants. Try to get your attention. You just get louder talking to God. Oh, hallelujah. You won't hear a thing. You won't hear a thing. It will drown him right out. And before you know, you'll forget he even spoke to you. You'll forget he even tried to get your attention. That's a revelation from God. That's one of the things that God has given me. I mean, if I ever go on the road, that's something I've always got to bring out. It is, it is revelation. That's when you got to a point where you don't even argue with him anymore. You're just like, you know what? When I, if I hear anything coming from that direction, and you know it's him. You, <laughs> come on. You know what? You really are not that special. You're nothing. You, you, you think you, the pastor gave you a compliment and you felt good about it. You know what? You really don't have any ability. You know what? You should be scared to death right now because something's going to come over you in a little while and you're going to die. You're going to have all kinds of fear and you should be scared to death. And we go, huh, 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 huh. We have all these fears and things. We know that voice. See, that's not the voice of God. The voice of God comes and says, Oh, Anita. I'm so proud of you. You know, just remember I always love you. Just remember I'm always going to be there for you. Just remember no matter what happens, I don't care how many times you fail, I'm going to be there. You just remember. You just remember. See, that's the Lord. And if you can recognize what voice to listen to, oh, change your whole life. It'll change your whole life. Sister, can you grab my wife for me and let her know when we're finishing up? Praise God. I'm here to tell you, we cannot be a part of the falling away. There's several falling, have, have, we've had several fallings away. There's going to be a great one. 
and there's a good chance, listen to me close, there's a good chance that you will be going through the tribulation someday before you die. There's a good chance that the enemy is going to come to you and say, listen, I'm God. Receive my mark or die. If you don't take my mark, I'll throw you in jail and, and I'll give you a week to think about it. And after a week you don't take the mark, I'm going to cut your head off. That's Bible. And there is going to be a group of people who are going to say, but, 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 you know why? Oh, come on, somebody hear me. Because your life is more valuable than your walk with God. What does it say? If you try to keep your life, you're going to lose it. And it's so amazing because there's just a short period of time when we know that that happens, that God's coming back. You're just going to have to endure. You, what do you say? If he had to shorten the days, you wouldn't even make it. Matthew 24, read it. If he didn't shorten the days, even the elect wouldn't be saved. So that's why he shortened the days. So he's only making it a certain amount of time. And you even get to know what that period of time is through the word of God. I think that's why God let us know about the last seven year period. Because at least you'll know, let's say it's the abomination of desolation. And there's only three and a half years left until Jesus comes. When you see that happen, when he goes into the temple saying, I am God, stops the sacrifices. you got three and a half years. That's Bible. If you don't believe me, come show me. I'll show it to you. And I'll have to re-preach it and put it online because I didn't put it up last week. But the Bible is very clear on this. Times, times, and the dividing of times. Uh, 1,042 days. And it's very simple math. Once, we don't know the day of the hour, but we know the season. And that's the season. So when that time comes, you're going to have to make a choice. You're going to have to make a choice. We've already seen. Man, I'll tell you, I was talking to this person the other day. And I said, if God would listen to me, listen to me close, church. This person's repented, baptized, and received the Holy Ghost. And I asked him, I said, if God returns right now, could you make it? Because I don't think so. Specifically told me, I don't think so. But was unwilling to do what I was suggesting to fix the problem. The response was, well, I'll just go. No, you're not hearing me. That's not what I want for you. I'm not asking you to leave. I don't want you to go. What I want you to do is to hear my voice. What I want you to do is understand that God is reaching out to you right now. The Bible says that 99 are here, but he'll leave the 99 to go get the one, to try to get that one who's lost. And God is saying, listen, I'm, I'm trying to reach out to you. And all they can think of is, well, you know, I'm just going to throw in the towel. Now, the conversation didn't end that way because this preacher is not willing to allow that to happen. I immediately begin to put my love out of him and say, let me just tell you something. This is not a condemnation. I'm not angry with you. Let me tell you why I'm saying this to you. I'm saying this to you because I love you. You know what? That's not, people, men don't say that to men nowadays. That, that makes you gay. That means you're a homosexual if you say you love another man. Read your Bible. David and Jonathan had a love that was amazing and they were not involved in any sexual relations at all. They were best friends. They were brothers. But when a man is willing to tell another, listen, I love you. We need to have more men be willing to tell another man, listen, I love you enough to reach out and say, I don't want to see you lost. I want to see you saved. I love people I don't even know. I said, listen, I love you, man. Come on, get yourself some of this God because God is coming. Mm. This is how the falling away happens. Very simply, I'm just not going to listen to the word of God. I'm not going to listen to the pastor. I'm not going to listen to anybody but, but, no, we're talking about people falling away. I'm not going to listen to anybody but, who's going to get it? When you're falling away, I'm not going to listen to the word. I'm not going to listen to the pastor. I'm not going to listen to God. 
I'm not going to listen to anybody but, say it, but me. Once you're there, oh Lord, let's stand. Once you're there, oh Jesus. When you have made a decision that the only thing you're going to follow is yourself, you are in severe danger. That's like.